Hello, American Crochet Association. Selena Baca here, founder, host, lead educator with the ACA. And today's Tuesday, so that means I've got a new tip for you and a tutorial. If you're watching live, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from. And as long as I'm here live, I'll give you an extra special shout out as soon as I see your comment. Now, today's tip and video tutorial is about the crochet projects that we make, okay? Uh, now, I actually just made a crochet project and um, I want a meaningful way for me to catalog the things that I'm making along with notes for them. Now, I know that a lot of people catalog what they make and how they make it and why they make it in lots of different ways. Maybe you take pictures of your work, maybe you keep a notebook, and all of those things are fantastic. I do the same thing. I take pictures of all of my work. I do keep a pattern notebook, but I still want a one-stop place for me to view all of the things that I make and also have meaningful connections between all of those products. Uh, a meaningful connection between the product and the pattern in an online forum. A meaningful connection to find that pattern, make notes about the pattern. What size did I make? What yarn did I use? What hook did I use? Are other people making the same pattern that I made? And if so, what yarns are they using? Uh, what colors are they working them in? What does it look like? So I'm proposing that Ravelry actually has a fantastic um, uh, feature for this. I've been using it for about 10 years. So because it's something that I know, like, and trust, and it's something that I use all the time, I wanted to walk you guys through me posting this specific project to my Ravelry. So uh, I think that uh, those are all of the reasons that I like to catalog all of the projects that I make. And those are the reasons that I think Ravelry is a really great solution for that. But if you guys have ways that you catalog or categorize or document the projects that you make, I'd love to hear what you're doing. Okay, so keep me posted in the comments. All right, before I get started with this little tutorial, kind of a walkthrough of that, let me see who's here and give you guys a shout out. Uh, it looks like Margaret is here. Hello, thank you so much for being here from England. Uh, Kay Mathis is here. Hello. Thank you so much for checking in. Sherry Richards is with us. Rama Laksmi is here. Hello, Rama. So good to see you. Donna Clark is here. Hello. So good to see you. Angel is checking in. Linda Woodthorpe is here. And Sherry Richards. She says, love Ravelry for so many reasons. Yeah. If you already have Ravelry, you may be aware of all of the free resources that are available to, to, to you when you have an account. And if you don't have a Ravelry, maybe after seeing something like this tutorial today might inspire you to want to come on over and check it out. This is in no way affiliated, sponsored, or endorsed by Ravelry. Again, I've just been a user for about 10 years. I think it has made a positive difference in my life as a crocheter, and I'm just happy to share what works for me. Okay, everybody. So... I'm gonna walk you through it. Questions, comments, feedback, please let me know, okay? Continue to leave those comments, questions, and feedback, uh, and I'm going to go through and look at them as soon as this little tutorial is over, okay? So what I'm looking at here is Ravelry. I'm already logged in. You can find this page when you just click on ravelry.com login. If you don't have an account, create one for free. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this menu bar up top here, and there's something you might notice. Uh, depending on when, when you watch this video, you might notice that Ravelry actually has a new look. I'm not using the Ravelry new look because I know that um, some people have not made that switch yet, and also some people really prefer the classic view. So I am looking at Ravelry on the classic view right now, but just know that there is a difference, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna look at this green menu up top here, and there are tons of menus. But what I want to look at is the My Notebook menu. And the very first thing that we're seeing there is projects, and I'm gonna click on that. And my computer's slow, so bear with me. All right, so when I click on projects, these are all of the projects that I've added through the years. I've only added 47, so even I need to up my project game. Um, but in my defense, I do write patterns. So all of those patterns are essentially also my products. So, 
or projects. So that's kind of my lame excuse for not having more projects here. So if we're if we're basing it on other metrics, I really have loaded over 300 projects here. But these are just the separate ones in addition to the pattern listings. Okay. So you may have a few projects listed here. You may have no projects listed here. Again, this is a great way for me to look at my resume as a crocheter. What are the things that I've made? And you can kind of categorize them and filter them and reorder them in any way you like. You can find different projects based on what they are, what yarn you used, how much yarn you used. Ravelry can be a rabbit hole of so much information. Don't be overwhelmed by that. Really kind of take that with a grain of salt right now because you can use it as little or as much as you like, okay? So even for the project that I'm gonna list today, I am not gonna use all the features because I don't want anyone to be scared of this. I want people to have a gentle introduction if you're not familiar with it because you can always go back and add to it. Okay, so because this is a brand new project, I have not added this to Ravelry yet, so we're going to do it together. Again, we see lots of options on this page. There's a lot of menus, there's a lot of information. But what I want you guys to do is click on add project right here. And when I do that, it's going to walk me through the different steps. Okay. So we're going to start with what craft is it? It's of course crochet, but there's other things here. So if you do more than crochet, know that you can add those projects here as well. Uh, I'm going to name my project. Now you guys don't know this, but I'm telling you this so that you do know this Christmas stocking that I made. Uh, this is actually one of my designs and I'm working up each size. And as I'm working up each size, I want to post my projects here, right? So this size is size number two. So that's how I want to identify it here. You can identify it however you'd like. Maybe it's a gift for someone. So maybe it's Sarah's baby shower gift. Uh, maybe you want to name it by who it's for or what yarn you use. This is really your chance to identify it. Okay. This is where you need to, this is where it gets really interesting and fantastic. You can link your project to the pattern that it goes for, uh, or that it goes to on Ravelry. So first and foremost, you do need to make sure that whatever project you're adding, See if it is already on Ravelry and make sure you know the exact name of that pattern, okay? For example, this one is the Noel stocking. And let's see, it's not that I didn't use a pattern. The pattern that I use is not on Ravelry. Those are options as well. But again, if you want to link it to a pattern, uh, this, is, this is where you put in that information. Okay, so I'm clicking continue. And here we see right here that there are lots of Christmas stocking patterns called the Noel stocking pattern, right? There's a few, there's a few options here. But this is the one that I want right here. This is the one that I wrote. I can see that it's the Noel Christmas stocking by Selena Baca from Selena Baca Crochet. So yes, that's, that's the pattern and that's the choice I'm going with. It's important to make sure that you're attributing your project to the appropriate place um, because if you're adding in a project uh, and it's not, you know, you're attributing it to not the correct project, you know, that can get a little messy. Okay. So here again, there's tons of information I can put in here. And really, I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down. You can, you know, name what, what are you going to call it based on whatever attribute you want to, to name it for? Who is it for? You, again, these are, these are things that you put in for your crochet resume. But do know this, this is going to be create, this is going to create a public project. So whatever you put in here, not only can the designer who you're attributing this pattern to see everything that you've written, but anyone on the internet can view this. So it's really, so I want you to know that uh, for, uh, not only for your own purposes, um, so that you can uh, articulate all the aspects of the pattern that are important to you, but also know that it's public so other people will be able to read it as well. Okay, do you want to link it to a Raveler? raveler? Uh, does it need to be finished by a certain date? I mean, there's, there's options in here if you do crochet for profit. If you're making things and selling them, you can put together, you can utilize these projects as, uh, you know, time management systems. And so that's kind of cool as well. 
Uh, what size did you make? I mean, maybe you're making a sweater and it's size medium. I'm making a Christmas stocking and the pattern uh, the, that I specifically made is size two. It is the Noel Christmas stocking. Yes, it's crochet. Do I want to attribute any tags to this? That's a whole other ball of wax. It's just a really tagging is kind of like, um, it's a system in which that will help you, um, come on now, help me out guys. Uh, no tags. You guys know how tags work. I don't know why this is so complicated for me. It's kind of like hashtags. It's kind of like categories. That's what I'm trying to say. So maybe in the tagging system, I want to put Christmas stocking. I want to put uh, toe up. What are some tags that are going to help me identify what this is? That's what I was trying to say. Uh, do I want to add a different category? Oh, geez, I should not have. Okay, I, I'm trying. My computer's already slow, so I don't want it to be any slower. What hook did I use? This can be really important information if you make something, maybe you made an alteration, maybe uh, you know you really wanted to match gauge and so you did use a different size hook than the pattern called for. This would be a great uh, place to put in that information, especially if you substituted the yarn that the pattern called for. So again, all of these little details you can put in. What was your gauge? What did the what was the pattern for the gauge within? Within the pattern, you know, you can really dial down and put in information here. Uh, what yarn did you use? I can add in, I can link in and add that yarn right here. And again, there can be too much information. Um, I used Mandala Ombre. There's a little link button here. So when I click that, uh, there it is right there. So I can, I can link it that, I can link that. What color did I use? Cool. Um, dye lot. I don't know if I want to, I mean, again, you can really dial it in. Uh, you can dial in as much information as you want here. Where did I purchase it at? What, what date did I purchase it? Total paid. I mean, again, you can go, you can dial in as much as you want. Uh, project notes. This is where you're going to put in any information that you want about this pattern. Used a different hook, chose this color, uh, decided to do this differently. So it's notes that will help you remember, um, you know, different aspects of the pattern. Enjoyed this pattern, um, you know, made this size instead of that. What are your notes that you're going to put here? Okay, so I think I've gone through all of this right here uh, as much as I want to right now. And now I'm just going to save those changes because there's some additional information that I want to show you. Okay, so, ooh. I didn't think it was going to do that. I actually still want to edit my project, so I'm going to go back to this. I thought that by clicking Save Changes, close without saving, Save Changes. Okay, so this is why we're doing it together. I, I need a little bit more practice. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to the top here because I completed all of this middle information, right, as much as I want to right now. Now I'm going to go off on the side, and I am finished with this. There are all these little emojis right here. I'm going to put a smiley face next to it. I was happy with the project. What is my progress? I am complete. So the progress is 100%. And I can even put in the date that I started, the date that I completed. Again, if this is a larger project, that system can help you to see when you started and when you stopped. Uh, do I want to share this with any groups on Ravelry that I'm involved in? No, I don't really need to do that at this time, but I can if I want to. Uh, my overall rating, I'm going to give it a five star. Um, the, I didn't have any problem. The flow and ease of use was fantastic. The, the instructions were all accurate. The stitch counts were accurate. So therefore, it gets five stars, okay? Clarity, how clear was this pattern to read? Did I have any difficulty with it? Nope, it was a very clear pattern. Therefore, it gets five stars. My difficulty rating, it was easy, medium, difficult, impossible. I'm going to say that it was easy. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to come over here to the first column where it's where I, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying columns because in my mind, I see column one pictures, column two pattern information, column three, what did I think about it? That's kind of the way I look at this right here. So I still want to add a picture. So I can upload them from my computer from Instagram from Google from Flickr upload from a URL, I can drag and drop. So I'm going to find uh, the picture that I just loaded from uh, my desktop. 
this morning. You guys are looking at all of my behind the scenes right now. Here we go. So I want to post this picture right now and I want to upload it. See, it's pretty easy, right? It's pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy to kind of follow along. All right, so while that's uploading, oh, I see so many of you guys are here and you guys have lots of comments. So I will be getting to those in just a minute. Keep those coming. Sometimes pictures can take a minute to upload and really you want to, this is a note that I wanted to add. So let's say you make three of the same pattern, right? You follow a pattern, but you make a variety. And a variety could mean anything. Maybe you make the same pattern in a new size. Maybe you make the same pattern in a new yarn. So every single new project that you make, literally, even though it's the same pattern, I strongly suggest completing or working up an entirely new project, okay? Because again, you're using a different yarn, therefore it's a different project. You maybe are using a different hook. You're maybe making a different size. So each one of these things deserves its own project, okay? That's gonna help you, uh, that's going to help you because you're going to see, I know I made this Christmas stocking, but I, you know, how many, oh, I made three different sizes, great. I put a project next to each one of those. Then you can annotate things like what, what color you use, what hook size, what the gauge was. Uh, you can really, you know, fine tune and detail that project to the best of your ability. Okay, so I've added in all the details that I want. I added in a photo. I've finished. I'm 100% complete. Um, I'm giving it a rating. And now I'm going to save those changes. Okay. Hooray, it's finished. Now I can rate the pattern and the yarn. Uh, oh, that's cool, that's a new feature. Uh, okay, so I did give the pattern a rating. Um, here are some adjectives that I thought about the pattern, quick, seamless, easy. Um, okay, how did I rate this yarn? I'm gonna give this yarn five stars, I loved it. I'm not gonna give it adjectives right now though. But that's pretty cool. Again, Ravelry is always doing things to give you, the user, a really good experience. So I find that really cool. Okay, so here is my project, it's loaded. Now let me show you how this links back to the pattern, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm looking at my project page right now, and these are just the details that I've entered in. So it doesn't give you all of that other stuff. Um, sometimes there are empty, uh, fields, but really it just kind of dials down to whatever you've added. So I've only added in yarn, colorway, what size, craft, you know, pattern name. Um, and, you know, of course, here's my star rating over here. So it really, you know, it, it cleans up uh, the page based on what you've what you've attributed to. Okay, now this is what I want to do. Remember I said three columns. If you're looking at desktop, column one picture, column two information, column three, it's all about the pattern in the yarn, right? So I'm looking at column number three here. Again, that's what I call it. And I'm gonna scroll down to where it says about this pattern. Can you guys see that? About this pattern, I'm gonna click on Noel Christmas stocking, okay? So that brings me back to the original pattern listing where it gives all of the information about the pattern, anything that you wanna know. But this is the thing that I think is cool, okay? So for me, I've now made this project and I've added it to Ravelry and it's in my project da database and I can view all of my projects when I go to my notebook and projects, right? That's one quick and easy way for me to see everything. But for anybody on Ravelry, including the designer, so this is my design, I see this, or anyone who's interested in a pattern, let's say, you know, I just stumbled across this pattern and I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I really like this. Okay, there's a few pictures here, but wow, there's 35 projects listed here. So I'm looking over here at the about this pattern information. When I click on 35 projects, it shows me all those projects. Now I can see, wow, there are 35 projects. Now I can see how different yarns work up. Variegated yarns with lots, you know, with three or more colors, with two colors. You know, I can see how a solid works up. I can see all the different sizes worked up. I can see all of the different pictures and what they look like. I can look at how these people rated. Uh, this this particular design. Maybe I see a project and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this so much. Let me click on that. I can see all of the different pictures, but I love this stocking. So I want to view this project from this user. Remember I told you that these projects are public 
And now I can see all the information about this project. So what yarn did this person use? Oh, they used Women's Institute uh, Marl Soft and Smooth Tweed Aran Yarn. Sweet. Now I know, now I can see the project and I know exactly what yarn they use. I know what hook they use. I know what size they made. So it's really helpful information for someone who just stumbles across a pattern. So next time you're looking on Ravelry and you want to know how a project works up, you know that you can look over here at projects to see, is anyone making this? What yarns are they using? What does it look like on them? What are, how do different sizes look as they're in use or they're worn? Uh, what do different colors look like in this project? So that is a really helpful resource as a user, just kind of scrolling around. For pattern writers, it's great to see that people are making your designs and what they think about them. And also as a user, this is a fantastic way for you to annotate, for you to catalog everything that you're making in one place. And it links to and attributes to uh, the patterns that you're using, the yarn you're using, and it gives you any sort of notes and details that you can access at any time. So there you have it. Those are all of the projects here. Let me just have mine up. Here is the project that I just posted. So I will have that up just in case you guys have any questions or we need to go back and look at it. Of course, it's so slow. Okay. All right. Let me see who's here and what you guys are saying. Uh, okay. Margaret, she says, I'm very new in Ravelry, but it looks to be a nice platform. Yeah. Uh, I think that sometimes we can, you know, Maybe we're afraid to use it because it does look a little complicated. There is a lot of information here. You don't have to use all of the things. Uh, even as I added this project here, I showed you that, yeah, there's a lot of options. You can even add in where you bought the yarn and what date and from what location and how much you spent because you really can use this free database to track anything that you possibly want pertaining to your your projects, what you're making, and what materials you're using. It's amazing. But you can use it uh, much more simplistically if that's where you're comfortable. Hello, Margaret from Mississippi. So good to see you. Linda Winthorpe, she says, just checked. I've got 559 projects listed on Ravelry. Well, lady, that's because you're the crochet queen. And uh, that is fantastic. You, I just showed you, I think I only listed like 47 or 49. So you're way ahead of me, lady, way ahead. Uh, Sandy is here. She says, I used to use a form where I kept track of my projects with a picture of it and all pertinent info. Uh, I put those in page protectors and into a binder. She says, I've gotten lax in doing that though. And my records are not up to date. I do post them all in my blog, which is up to date. Yeah, I think that lots of different, and that's a, that's a really interesting way to look at you know, how you track what you do, what system you use. And I've seen lots of different people do lots of different things. Um, you know, maybe crochet is literally just your hobby and you don't have any sort of business page to attribute what you're doing, right? So m some people will just, you know, post pictures of their work on social platforms like Instagram or Facebook. Um, so really, if you're already taking those pictures, if you already have a notebook, you might want to consider using something like Ravelry just because of how it, it's uh, so interlinked to other things that, that, um, that you can do in Ravelry. It's kind of fantastic. Amanda Woodbury, she says, I love Ravelry. Oh yes, me too. I'm a huge fan of what it can do for me. Donna Clark, she says, I have a Ravelry account, but that's about it. Hopefully today I will get some pointers where I can better utilize Ravelry. Yes, if you already have a Ravelry account, hopefully this tutorial will help show you one thing you can do on Ravelry that could help give you a better crochet experience. Uh, so if you do use this tip today, I would love to see in the comments, uh, you can link up your project so we can all go and check it out. Kay Mathis, she says, I really like using Ravelry. However, I do not like the new look. I find it difficult to utilize. Kay, I, I hear you. I don't like change when things look a certain way and I, and I use a certain platform for a while. I don't want it to look different. I will say though, when I switched to the new Ravelry view, uh, and I did this a couple weeks ago whenever it launched, I did make a video tutorial to show you how it looks a little different, but it's really, it operates the same way. And there are some things that you might find are easier to, um, easier to locate in the new view. 
So yes, I'm like, oh, it's different. It's change. I resist change. Uh, but after just taking a few minutes and, and walking through it, I was a little bit more comfortable about what they were doing. Sherry says, I like the new look of Ravelry. Yeah. And if you guys are curious about what that looks like, again, go back to uh, a video we did a couple uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and it does walk you through the new look of Ravelry. Amanda says, I do that too. Resist change. Is that what it is? Sherry Richard, she says, thanks. I did not know that was a thing. Ooh, which part wasn't a thing? I'd love to hear. Uh, Sandy, thank you. That's what I was trying to say. Tags help in a search. Yes. So if you're searching or if other people are searching a certain tag, uh, you know, if you attribute a tag to a project, um, you know, let's say that I'm a user on Ravelry and I'm looking for socks that are toe up. If toe up is an attribute to a pattern or a project, those are going to come up in my search. So thank you. I was all tongue tied before and I, I was doing a terrible job of explaining that, but that's perfect. Thank you so much, Sandy. Uh, let's see who else is here. Francis, she says, thank God. I'm sorry I'm late. I need to understand Ravelry more. I'm going to replay. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Ravelry, hopefully this is a video that helps you kind of, you know, dip your toes into uh, into the Ravelry pool, just so you can kind of see how it can work for you. Uh, Kay Mathis, ooh, your comments covering my whole screen. Uh, she says, when I am looking to make a pattern, I look at other projects to see what yarns they used and hooks to see if I want to change up what the pattern calls for uh, by the look of other projects. She says, it also gives me an idea of whether or not to purchase the pattern or not by the comments. Absolutely, all of those reasons are excellent reasons as a user to, you know, see, hey, do I love the, the, you know, to, to at on the, the man, I'm tongue tied today. So when you're looking at a pattern, you may go, wow, this, this initial picture looks great, but is this something, I don't know, let me dig around a little bit. Looking at those projects will help you do that digging to see if this is a project you want to invest in. I see Joanne is here. Good afternoon, Joanne. Thank you so much for being here. Amanda Woodbury, she says, love the ease of adding projects. Yeah, it can be pretty user-friendly. Um, again, if you've never done it before, you may see all of the options and feel like, oh, it's just too much. You can always go back and edit your project and you can literally start a project with next to no information. So it's not that you have to add in a certain percentage of information for it to qualify as a project. Not so. You can literally have a project that's uh, just a picture and maybe a name. Uh, so it really can be really, really simplistic. Uh, let's see, Joanne, she says, I like to post my projects when I finish them. Sometimes I have a hard time coming up with adjectives. She says, I use my phone to post the pictures. Yes, you absolutely can. So I have posted projects on my phone, on my smartphone by, you know, just logging into Ravelry on the internet. So no special app or anything. Although Ravelry does have an app, but I have, I don't have it and I haven't used it. So I don't have any feedback on that. Um, and what I'm showing you today, this tutorial is all through my desktop. So um, it may look a little differently if you're, you know, whether you're using Ravelry from a desktop or a tablet or a smartphone, it might look a little bit different, but just know that you should have all of the same information. Oh, uh, Joanne, she says, I love uh, when you give us hints to use Ravelry. My pleasure. I mean, this is a huge part of, um, you know, my crochet life and how, I, you know, this is a this is a tool that I use to give me a better experience. And it's literally something that I was doing. And so I was very happy to share. Uh, Joanne, I'm going to try that with my next project. Yeah, definitely give it a try. And if you guys do post your project link in the comments. Oh, that's, I'm sure you may wonder, how do I, how do I share this, right? So there's a few ways you can share it. So I'm literally on my project page right now, right? So this is actually a link that you can share. So you can just highlight, uh, right click, copy, right? Or you can do this. Do you see this button over here that says share it? Pretty cool, right? You can send it to somebody on uh, Ravelry or you can share this page with others. Um, you can invite people, you can make it public and visible to all. Uh, you can, you know, so there's lots of different sharing options. Again, don't be overwhelmed by the options because you can go as simplistic as possible by just copying and pasting this link. But if you only want 
Ravelry users to see it or some people to see it or you only want to share it with somebody on the Ravelry platform, you have those options as well. So lots and lots of options. Uh, let's see who else is here. So many comments. I love it. Francis, she says, wow, I didn't know uh, that about checking pattern complete a uh, project that I could see uh, that info too. Thank you, Selena. My pleasure. Uh, Francis, she is wondering, she says, I, she's commenting to Sandy. She says, I love your blog. It's so personal. Ooh, uh, feel free to share your blog with us too. We would, uh, I'm sure more, more people than just Francis are, are interested. So feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, Margaret, Selena, you are real. you really helped me to know how to use Ravelry better for my growing business. Ravelry really, uh, should sponsor you. Well, uh, that would be fantastic. I think that their I I think that their product Ravelry as a product is absolutely amazing. It's something that has absolutely given me a better experience in crochet, and so I'm so so happy to share that. And I'm glad you feel the same way, Margaret. My pleasure. Francis, she says, oh, so that's what tag means. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, thank you, Sandy. I appreciate it. Connie is here. Caught us at the end. Amy McKeever is here. Hello, Amy. So good to see you. Linda Woodthorpe, she says, also, if you go to the index of your projects, it will show you how many of your projects have those tags. Ah, she says, index also lists how many projects you have under various categories. Example, hats, bags, how many projects you posted each year. Yeah, and Linda, that's an excellent example of how detailed Ravelry can be. And just to give you an example of what Linda's talking about here, I've gone back up to my notebook. I've clicked on projects and you can filter these projects in any way. You can sort them in any way. You can index them. You can organize them. There are so many different things that you can do. So this is what Linda was just talking about. Uh, you know, these are the dolls that I've made, baby, toddler, child, teen, adult. Here are the categories. So for example, I've made 28 accessories, nine of them for the neck and torso. What projects did I complete by year? Um, how many are finished? How many are in progress? I mean, really, there's no end to the detail in which you can you can utilize this feature. So thank you, Linda. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Joanne, she says, Ravelry gives you a choice to not use the desktop version as well. Yes, that's absolutely true. Sherry, she says, I did not know that you can use the about this pattern section to see uh, not only all the projects of the pattern, but also find the original pattern. Yes. So, you know, there's lots of, so when you link those projects, right? So it's, it's, this database will link in a multitude of ways. So it then links your project to the pattern. And that way people can come across your project and find the original pattern, or maybe people find the pattern first and then they can reverse engineer and look at your project. So that's why it's really important to utilize the tags and features in those ways specifically for those items. Linda says, you can also add private notes that only you can see. Can you now? Actually, that's uh, Linda's telling me something that I don't think I knew. That's something that's new to me that I am unaware of. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of digging on that because I wasn't aware that you could add private notes. Hmm. Thank you, Linda. All right. And Francis is the last comment that I see today. She says that index is cool. Okay. I need to check that on me. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ravelry can be a really fun place. And once you understand how you can utilize it and how these features can benefit you and how they link to you know, other people in the crochet world by way of patterns or just other individuals. It's really a fascinating thing. So if you guys enjoyed this tip today, please let me know in the comments. If you guys use this tip today and create a project following these steps, please post that link in the comments. I would absolutely love to see that. And if you guys think that this is a valuable tip that could help the crochet community, if you guys could tag a crochet friend in the comments, or share this video in other places where you enjoy crochet, I would really appreciate your help and support. All right, everyone, that's all I see today. I think I've gone through all the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed it.
Peace, love, crochet. Thank you for being part of the ACA.